Okay, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Executive Committee of Exeter City Council here this evening on the 7th of April, 2020. Um, just to say, we are making history here as a local authority. This is definitely our first meeting that we have ever had in this way. It's now been approved through government legislation and the regulations are in place which allows us to have a meeting uh, in this virtual way and which is all legal and above board. We have a number of issues that we need to conduct as a business, but the first thing I would like to say to uh, those members of the public who may be watching us again to say that we really appreciate the efforts of everybody in the city in what they're doing in isolating, staying safe, and only making the necessary journeys that they need to. It is so, so important uh, for us to defeat this virus by us all sticking together to make sure we can do it, and then we can all pull out of this together and get on with, which I believe will be a challenging job going forward. I would also want to pay tribute to all those community groups out there working alongside the Exeter Health and Wellbeing in bringing this forward, in supporting those people in the shielded group and those people who need assistance through shopping, fetching medication and supporting vulnerable people in this way. There's still a lot to do and I would like to thank all the officers and I hopefully this meeting won't go on too long this evening to allow them to go home and have a bit of home life um, in order to get on with it. They're doing a great job and I pay tribute to all the um, city council workers who are working from home, uh, working very diligently and my admiration goes out to those people who still have to come into work. I admire our, our bin workers, they're out there every day for us doing the collections. It's really a great job. And of course, those people outside of the City Council who are all trying to make our lives okay. The NHS goes without saying what a fantastic job they're doing. All those support workers, whether it's people in the farms, food producing, or doing all the necessary stuff, we really appreciate it. So. I felt I just needed to say that on behalf of uh, Exeter City Council and all our friends. It's very, very important. I felt I need to make that statement. So I'm now going to ask um, our clerk, Mark Devon, who will do an effective roll call first of the members and then those officers who are attending. So, Mark, it's over to you. Thank you, Chair. Um, could I ask councillors who are in attendance to just state if you are present when I call your name? So, so Councillor Bialik. Present. Councillor Sutton. Present. Councillor Fole. Uh, so he might be running late. Uh, Councillor Gassane. Present. Councillor Harvey. Present, yes, I'm here. Councillor Morse. Present. Councillor Pearson. Pearson. Present. Councillor Williams. Councillor Williams. Present. Councillor Wright. Present. And Councillor Wood. Present. Oh, we have nine members in, in, in at the meeting chair, so we are fully quorum. Uh, also, uh, we have councillors uh, Kevin Mitchell and councillors Diana Moore also in attendance. And for officers, uh, I've, I'm, just, I'm just going to re repeat, the, repeat that as, again. So if I read out uh, the title and name, if you just, just state it I'm present as well, please. Uh, so Chief Executive and Growth Director Kareem Hassan. Present. Director Bindu Arjun. She is present, Mark. She's just trying to reconnect now. Okay, thank you. Director David Bartram. Present. Director Joe Yelland. So I think she's on the line. Uh, Director uh, John Paul Hedge. Present. 
City Solicitor Barn Al Kafaji. Present. Chief Finance Officer David Hodgson. Present. Corporate Manager Democratic and Civic Support John Street. Present. Muse Museum Manager Camilla Hampshire. Present. Brilliant. And Democratic Services Officers Howard Bassett and myself are present. I also think that Councillor Ledbetter has joined us. Are I you am there? present. Um, oh, everybody. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Right. Well, thank you for that check. And if Bob comes in, we will mention it when he, by uh, Councillor Fole, when he comes in. And I would say it's just as well we've got a virtual meeting because we wouldn't get all these people in the same room together uh, at this moment. So that's excellent. So I think we'll move on then. Uh, uh, we've done attendance. Uh, there's only one apology, which could be Councillor Fole at the moment. We're still waiting on him to arrive. Uh, is uh, You've had the minutes of the um, 10th of March. Are you all satisfied that I sign those as a true record? Yes. Agreed. Right. Yes. Okay. Right. Yes. Okay. Agreed. Yes. And in the yes. absence of any dissent, uh, I will uh, uh, accept those as as done and those will be signed uh, again like a normal meeting if there are any declarations of interest members should advise us accordingly and I suppose leave the virtual room uh, there is no matters on the agenda on item 4 to exclude any members uh, of the public and so this will take us to item 5 questions and uh, there have been no questions of the public which have been put before us on this occasion. And so this now takes us into uh, item six, which is the update on the council's position uh, on the uh, coronavirus epidemic. And I will ask um, Kareem Hassan as the uh, chief executive and growth director, please to introduce this item. Uh, Kareem. Thank you, Chairman. It's, it's a report which sets out the response of the Council to the current crisis, and uh, everybody will be familiar with the task in hand which is set out to protect the NHS. It's uh, a, the case that all local resilience forums have declared COVID-19 as a major incident. Um, but the focus for local government and in turn our response has been set out and directed by the Secretary of State. And it's very much around the support for vul the vulnerable people during what is an extended period of self-isolation and supporting the economy. And the written report captures the areas that we're working on. Um, I don't propose to go into too much detail on the areas covered in the report because I'm sure the portfolio holders will want to inform uh, the committee on what we've done to date. But what I did want to say is, firstly, in regards to what we've done in supporting the vulnerable, I think we have to recognize the pace at which we've responded to this current crisis. Um, we've effectively built a contact center from scratch in order to support the kind of infrastructure to connect those who are vulnerable with those who are providing volunteered support. We've got something like 60 council officers now working in support on a seven day a week rota. And as of the weekend, there were 900 contacts that have been made with the hub. And today I believe 50,000 leaflets have been sent out to inform uh, what available support, so the support that's available. And uh, something like 34,000 pounds of funding is already being committed towards the community groups who are supporting this uh, endeavor. What I did want to point out was the work that Strata have done in support of the infrastructure and, and again uh, it's a remarkable uh, response that we've had from officers like Joe Yelland as the director but Sport England local del delivery pilot have also put resources behind uh, this initiative as well as the Devon Community Foundation that's managing the Wellbeing Exeter uh, response. I don't want to go on to describe any more of the detail because I'm sure the portfolio holder will want to come in. Um, but what I did want to, to bring to members' attention is because the pace at which this response is, is, is driving uh, activity, it's, it's beginning to bite 
um, from the point of view of our finances. So the government is asking people to stay at home. Uh, a consequence of, of, of that is you can uh, understand why footfall now in the city centre has dropped dramatically. That's an outcome we all want to achieve. Um, but it's having an impact on our income streams. And I wanted to just to spend a little bit of time, if I can, with members, just explaining the current uh, position with our finances. We have reports on the executive tonight which uh, describe uh, our accounts at the end of the year. And uh, we closed the general fund with a healthy balance of 4.3 million, which is comfortably above the minimum that is recommended for us. But this week, the last week that's gone rather, our car parking income was down by over 98.8%. Um, we took £1,954,000 of income last week against a budget of 160000 income. The week before that, we took in £9,000 worth of income against a budget of 171000 The lockdown um, is likely to go on for some time. So currently, we are losing in terms of income between 1 and 1.2 million pounds a month. Now, this is being played out across the country from conversations with colleagues across district councils. All district councils are having a direct impact on their income sources and that's been relayed to government and I know that government is sympathetic to the position that we find ourselves and are asking, and then today a letter came out asking for evidence and data from all the councils as to the impact that's being experienced. So there is a sense in which the government is aware of what's uh, the experience that we're, we're having. They put an initial 1.6 billion pounds of funding to the sector that was um, particularly aimed at the upper tier authorities and so for example Devon County Council received 22 million pounds worth of funding we received 72,000 pounds worth of funding and that money was put to the support of the uh, homeless in making sure that they were accommodated um, so my Understanding from the government and those who have been uh, tasked with speaking to local authorities is they're very much alive to the issues that we're facing. I want the members to know because there are two issues that we need to focus on. There's an immediate cash flow issue that we need to address because we've got two payments to make this April. On the 17th of April, we need to fund the uh, County Council fire and rescue and the police to the tune of 6.6 .6 million and at the end of the month a similar amount 6.6 .6 million needs to be uh, delivered to Plymouth uh, City Council on the basis and government on the basis of the business rates pool and so cash flow is an issue for us like it is for every district council in the country and we are hoping that the government is going to be doing something very quickly about that issue Longer term, it clearly depends on how long the lockdown will continue. Uh, at this stage, nobody can say when, when the exit strategy is going to be set out. Um, but I wanted members to be aware of the financial challenge that we have and the um, acknowledgement that we've had from government that everybody is cited on this and they are working to find a solution. Chair, I think that's uh, enough for me in terms of uh, the introduction to the report. Yes, <clears throat> and thank you, uh, Kareem. Now, we can see recommendation to one, and I'm going to go round the executive in a moment um, for them to make contributions. But And from the chief executive is outlined some of the financial considerations that we're having to consider. And this is why uh, we have uh, made a decision and... Uh, that uh, items 10, items 12, items 14, 15, 16, and I believe 17, uh, have been removed from the agenda. 
And I do not want people to read anything other. Uh, there's nothing wrong with those reports. We're quite happy with those reports. We're happy that they're structured correctly. And the ask of those reports, which you've all seen, is all out in the public um, uh, domain. So we're not hiding anything. But what we've are thinking that perhaps we need to put those on the back burner. Our next executive is June. Uh, a lot is going to happen in the meantime. And so we just think it's inappropriate to be perhaps identifying uh, those projects at this particular moment in time. And uh, I've been assured by the chief executive that in particular with the key um, there is no uh, the key car park. There is no health and safety issue. So, and we, if we would have to do something, we would. But there is no need. So, make that clear. And that's all fits in with what you're saying there, Chief Executive. So, um, what I think uh, we've got Dave Hodgson here, but I'll wait, uh, Dave, because I don't want to turn this into a financial debate about this. This is just an update on the council's response which is quite clear as opposed to a wider debate than that on what we need to deal with. So before I go forward, uh, we have got um, uh, uh, the executive here, but I've also got um, Councillor um, Mitchell and Councillor Ledbetter, who are members who are entitled to speak on matters without giving notice. Um, um, Councillor Ledbetter, is there anything you would like to say with regard to our recommendation in paper? No, I, no, I think it's uh, eminently sensible. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, Kevin, uh, Councillor Mitchell, is there anything you would like to add with regard to the recommendation or paper? Okay, so I'll now um, move round the table and I will ask... Um, I will ask uh, Councillor Sutton, would you like to make a contribution? Councillor Gussain. Um, no, none, um, no more contributions. I just want to reiterate exactly uh, what came into the recommendation. Thank you. Okay, Councillor. Councillor Harvey. No, I'm fine, thank you. Councillor Morse. Hello. Um, just quickly, I just wanted to say uh, a bit of a thankful uh, thank you to some of those officers and some of those staff that have been working particularly in the area that I, I manage, which relates not only to homelessness, but to benefits and to the uh, business rates area. And I just wanted to say a thank you to them for the hours and the work that they put in to ensure that all of the rough sleepers that we are able to make contact with are housed at the moment, are getting some level of support, are being fed, but also to those who are dealing with the council tax queries and business rate inquiries who are working round the clock and sacrificing a lot of their downtime in order to ensure that these payments are made to people I know who are desperately in need of them. So just a big thank you for them uh, because I don't, you know, all of our staff are just proving what wonderful people they are, but they're the people that are getting my jobs done for me, so I'd just like to thank them. Yes, thank you, Councillor Morse, and I think we all echo that. That's very appropriate. Uh, Councillor Pearson. Nothing to add apart from to support the recommendation uh, as it is. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Williams. Uh, I don't have anything to add, and I'd echo Councillor the comments Wright. made by Councillor Morse. Right. Okay, thank you. Councillor Wright. Thank you. Yes, just to totally support all the thanks that's been given in that recommendation and to support what <coughs> Councillor Morse has said as well. And also a thanks to um, all the volunteers in the city as well that have taken part in the Exeter Community Wellbeing Hub. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Councillor Wright. Uh, Councillor Wood. Online. Thank you. I fully oh, endorse I'll that as well. Uh, yeah, yeah I, was, I was going to come back to you, Bob. Uh, Councillor Wood. Thank you, Chair. Um, very much in agreement with uh, what the other councillors have said, but specifically want to express my thanks to the Democratic Services team who have made um, this possible to have our first virtual meeting, um, and also the uh, ICT team within the council and strata 
for uh, working very, very hard against very tight deadlines to get us all talking to each other. And i uh, also like to thank my fellow councillors for uh, rising to the challenge. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Uh, Councillor Fole, I'm glad you're in the room. Councillor Fole. Yes, the wonders of modern technology mean I'm with you, albeit, uh, albeit late. So uh, I should just join in from here, Phil. Thank you. Thank you. OK, um, so we're now going to I'm going to uh, the recommendation there. I'm going to ask Mark Devin to do a roll call and um, just say yes or no to the recommendation. Mark. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I've, I've, I've read out a list of councillors' names, and if you could just state if you're for, against, or abstaining oh, right. okay. uh, from, from the recommendation, please. Oh, so, 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 Councillor Bialik? For. Councillor Foll? For. Councillor Gassane? For. Councillor Harvey? For. Councillor Morse? For. Councillor Pearson? Four. Councillor Sutton? Four. Councillor Williams? Four. Councillor Wood? Four. And Councillor Wright? Four. That's a unan unanimous approval of the recommendations and they have been carried, Chair. Thank you, Mark. Um, we now go on to item seven, which is the overview of the general fund revenue budget for 2019-20, third quarter. And I would ask um, David Hodgson to introduce the paper, please, David. Thank you, Chair. Uh, this is report looks at the um, estimate of the, the outturn position for the general fund revenue budget uh, for the um, financial year 2019-20. Um, obviously, the, the restrictions came into to being in the last couple of weeks of the, of the financial year. So, in terms of the, the impact within the 2019-20 um, budget, it's not anticipated that those will be significant. So, uh, I don't intend to go through a great deal of detail in the report other than to say we're looking at a significantly better outturn position. Uh, only taking £67,000 from the, the general fund working balance, which will leave it around £4.3 million at the, the end of the financial year. There's one request to Council for uh, supplementary budgets, but this purely relates to um, the amount of depreciation being charged. And in local authority accounts, although depreciation is charged uh, to services, it's taken out below the line and does not impact on the council taxpayer, therefore won't impact on the, the general fund working balance. Uh, I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you, uh, David. Uh, the recommendations are there before you all, and there are four recommendations. This is about the general fund forecast position for the 2019 financial year. The supplementary budgets that David mentioned of 1.44390 pounds. The outstanding sub sundry debt position as of December 2019, and the creditors' payments performance. Now. Uh, I'm going to ask, first of all, does Councillor Ledbetter wish to say anything about those four recommendations? No, thank Councillor you. Ledbetter. No. Uh, Councillor Mitchell. Okay. No. Um, now, we've got a request understanding 44, Order 44 from Councillor Diana Moore. And, Councillor Moore, I'm going to ask you but, to... Um, that's been with, with, withdrawn. Um, withdrawn. There you are. So is, is that okay. correct, Councillor Dynamo, just to reconfirm that? Councillor Moore, are you there? Okay. Yeah. Right. So we've got the, the four recommendations there. Hello? Okay. Hi. And I... Who's there? Is that you, Diana? Clearly not. Um, I'm going to um, go through the executive names, and I don't require a response. 
just say yes when I say your name if you wish to to speak. Councillor Sutton, Councillor Fole, Councillor Gusain, Councillor Harvey, Councillor Morse, Councillor Pearson, Councillor Williams, Councillor Wright, and Councillor Wood. Okay, in, uh, therefore there's no contributions. David Hodgson, is there anything you would like to um, finally say with regard to the recommendations? Uh, <clears throat> no, the recommendations are as they stand uh, and aren't impacted by any current events. Thank you very much, uh, David. Um, so, Mark, I'm going to ask you to do the uh, roll call for the voting, please, Mark. Thank you, Chair. I've, um, as, as, as before, I'll read out the names, and if you let me know if you're voting for, against, or abstaining. So, Councillor Bialik? For. Councillor Fole? For. Councillor Gassain? For. Councillor Harvey? For. Councillor Morse? For. Councillor Pearson? For. Councillor Sutton? For. Councillor Williams? For. Councillor Wood? For. And Councillor Wright? For. I can confirm that's a unanimous vote, Chair, and the, and the recommendations have been approved and carried. Thank you very much, Mark. I'll now move us on to item eight, which is the 2019-20 uh, General Fund uh, capital monitoring statement and um, here we have uh, one recommendation and I'm going to ask David Hodgson please to introduce the paper. David. Thank you Chair. Um, this is the uh, quarter three budget monitoring for uh, the capital programme. Uh, out of a total programme of £60 million pounds, I'm pleased to say that we've spent uh, in excess of 50% of the of the budget uh, as at the end of quarter three, which compares favourably to 32% at this time last year. Uh, there's no request for additional funding in the paper, uh, so I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. Uh, thank you, David. Um, I'll run through, you've seen the recommendation there, uh, members. I, uh, Councillor Ledbetter, do you want to say anything? Thank you. Okay. Uh, Councillor Mitchell? No, thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Um, and again, members, just shout yes when I call your name. Councillor Sutton, Councillor Fole, Councillor Gusain, Councillor Harvey, Councillor Morse, Councillor Pearson, Councillor Williams, Councillor Wright, Councillor Wood. Again, David, is there anything you want to add at the end? David Hodgson? No, there's nothing to add. Thank you, David. Mark, if you could do the call for the voting, please. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> uh, so, so, so for four against or abstain... Uh, we get that, no, Mark. We get that bit. <laughs> oh, wait, I, won't, I won't repeat that. <laughs> okay. uh, Councillor Bialik? Four. Councillor Fole? Four. Councillor Gassain? Four. Councillor Harvey? Four. Councillor Morse? Four. Councillor Pearson? Four. Councillor Sutton? Four. Councillor Williams? Four. Councillor Wood? Councillor Wood? Four. Councillor Wright? Four. Well, that's a unanimous vote, Chair, and the recommendations have been carried. Thank you. We now move on to agenda item nine, which is the 2019 stroke 20 HRA budget monitoring report for quarter three. And I believe this is um, David Hodgson again. David. Thank you, Chair. The, the final one of the uh, three financial papers. Uh, this is the housing revenue account. Uh, and again, I'm pleased to say uh, a substantially improved position uh, a reduction in the uh, plan take from the HRA working balance uh, for, down from 1.336 million to just 
bear with me. £144,000. Uh, again, there's no request for additional funding in the paper, so I'm happy to take any questions. Uh, thank you, uh, David. Um, are there any statements from uh, Councillor Ledbetter or Councillor Mitchell? No, thanks. No, thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, guys. Uh, I'm going to open this on the, on the recommendations again to the uh, councillors. Councillor Sutton. Councillor Foll, Councillor Gusain, Councillor Harvey, Councillor Morse, Councillor Pearson, Councillor Williams, Councillor Wright, Councillor Wood. Thank you. Mark, if you would like to do the, uh, the call, the register for voting, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Councillor Bialik? Four. Councillor Foll? Four. Councillor Gusain? Four. Councillor Harvey? Four. Councillor Morse? Four. Councillor Pearson? Four. Councillor Sutton? Four. Councillor Williams? Four. Councillor Wood? Four. Councillor Wright? Four. I can confirm that's a unanimous vote, Chair, um, and the recommendations have been carried. Thank you very much, Mark. Now we're going to move on to item uh, 11, which is the urgent change to the scheme of delegation to officers. And I must add out, first of all, you will see, and I will ask Baron to come in to uh, talk us through the recommendations in a moment, but we have um, revised some of the recommendations. And just to make it clear what they are, re Recommend, uh, recommendation to one, where we will be um, changing the report to add that the delegated authority for members of the strategic management board to make decisions shall only be exercised in consultation with the leader of the council or in his absence, the deputy leader of the council. On recommendation to two, the city solicitor may only amend the constitution to give effect to changes in legislation in response to the coronavirus pandemic following consultation with the leader of the council or in his absence, the deputy leader of the council. With regard to item 2.6, this is now removed, deleted, and 2.7 is also uh, deleted. Those are the recommendations. I will ask Barn to speak, but I would also say that by virtue of the legislation which gives us the powers to do this, that legislation itself has a sunset clause. So when that disappears, this disappears. So uh, Barn, can you please talk to the paper, please? Yes, thank you very much, Leader. Um, so I wrote this report probably five or six weeks ago, and at the time uh, I was trying to work out how we run committee meetings, which at the time uh, had to be done physically, i.e. members present, uh, with uh, members of the public present, and yet at the same time observe social distancing rules. And so that is why we had the... Uh, recommendation in relation to uh, members of the public's questions and also uh, in relation to um, uh, having um, petitions presented to the committee. So um, the regulations, as you have said, uh, were laid uh, and were published, I think, Thursday of last week. They came into force this Saturday. And so we've moved very, very quickly to be able to have this meeting remotely, uh, complying with the leg legislation at the, at, uh, the same time. So um, effectively, as you say, um, what this does is allows SMB some resilience. So currently, each of the directors in the strategic management board have um, delegation that exists in the council's constitution, which is only exercised by them. And we were concerned that in the uh, you know in the event that one of us got um, unwell or un, uh, unavailable for some reason, that we wanted to step into each other's shoes and be able to exercise the delegations. And that includes um, the urgent decision 
Asian delegation that um, we currently already exists, but making sure that those delegations are exercised in consultation with the leader. So uh, all we're doing is trying to put resilience for uh, SMB. And um, that is absolutely in line with the restructure that took place three or four years ago where Kareem actually wanted to have directors without portfolio so that if he needed to, he can move them around. So um, that all flows through logically. Um, so essentially, um, the other things that we have left is to, you'll see that um, in uh, point 2.3 the report, um, what we're asking for is to give a, a dispensation to members to be absent for more than six months uh, in the event that they their absence is corona related. Um, and effectively, as you say, we've, we've withdrawn uh, the recommendation that relates to a removal of the right to speak publicly at committees or members of the public to speak and ask questions. And also we've withdrawn the, um, the right to present or the, we've reintroduced the right to uh, present petitions at uh, the council meetings. Um, as you say, there is a sunset clause. The remote working regulations are continuing until May 2021. After that, we'll have to wait and see what the government um, wants to put in place instead, if anything. Um, that's all I propose to say, so happy to take questions to assist. Uh, thank you, Bon, for that. And so I really do want contributions to stick to the recommendations and I hope you all understand the recommendations because uh, I want the clarity on all the issues. So uh, Councillor Ledbetter, is there any remarks on the regulation, on the recommendations you would like to make? Well I think I, I, I support the changes you've made, it's uh, very very unusual times and therefore innovative solutions are needed so I've got nothing else to add really but I understand why it's necessary. I'm glad you've got a sunset clause. So. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you, Councillor Ledbetter. Councillor Mitchell. Um, thank you, Leader. Um, I, when I first saw this recommendation, as you all know, um, I had a few concerns, and, and I'm very grateful for the fact that we had a conversation um, and we were able to go through this paper in greater detail. And I'm also very grateful for the amendments that have been made, which, in my view, um, make this paper um, far better um, and keeps in place the ability of us to attempt to run this council um, as well as possible in the future, including still allowing um, members of the public to bring in um, petitions and questions. Um, however, obviously the members of the public need to realise these are challenging times, so therefore they may be dealt with slightly differently um, than previously. Um, so in, in a nutshell, really, I'm, I'm very grateful for the fact um, that this has been changed from its original form, um, and I look forward in the future um, to us continuing to attempt to run the council um, as openly as possible. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you, um, uh Councillor Mitchell, I'm glad you recognise our attempts in this matter. Um, we have uh, Councillor Moore, understanding 44. Uh, Councillor Moore, if you can keep to the recommendations, I would really be pleased if you could just talk to the recommendations and the paper, please. Councillor Moore. Thank you very much, Councillor Bialik. Can you hear me? I can. Fantastic. Um, I would like to say a quick thank you to the officers for the incredible job that they have done to act swiftly to protect and reconfigure how council services are delivered and the setting up of the Community Wellbeing Exeter to support the community and provide support to community groups who are doing an amazing job. And I'm sure these swift actions have saved lives, so thank you. And I also understand that this situation, what has happened, demonstrates the need for amendments to the Constitution. So it's obviously understandable that the council needs to continue to operate in a proper way during this state of emergency. Um, from the original paper, I am concerned that the proposals set out are too wide ranging and make accountability unclear. Um, so rather than a wide ranging power for the SMB to make any decision on any matter, um, clarity over delegated decisions um, and the need to consult with the councillor, which is, I think, what you're suggesting with the amendments, 
are welcome um, rather than the original um, um, uh, proposals. So it would be better if the proposals are set out to limiting and are set out are limited to extending the deputisation arrangements for both the senior management board and also executive members. And I understand that there is a legislation to allow councils to under to continue to operate. Um, but I am concerned about recommendation 2.4 to suspend certain standing orders with immediate effect. So standing order 15 sets out the process for suspension of standing orders, which does require the full council to make this decision. So I'd be grateful for information about legal powers that are not set out in the papers, which enables this to happen. I'm also grateful that there's clarification that there's a sunset clause. That's very helpful. And I welcome the withdrawal of um, the recommendation to suspend questions and petitions. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Councillor Moore. Um, I'm now going to ask um, the members if they would like to make a contribution. Councillor Sutton. Councillor yes. Foll. Yes. Oh, Sorry, yes, Chair, right. could okay. I... yes, yes, all right. Come on, Councillor Sutton, in you come. Thank you. Um, just briefly, um, welcome this report. Uh, I think it's it's sensible. I think it's timely. And everybody hopes that the situation doesn't uh, get to the point where some of these uh, um, powers are necessary. But I think it's wise to have the framework in place just in case, uh, because we don't want to get to the point where we urgently need uh, this paper and there are um, there's nobody left to actually agree it. So it's about having appropriate policies in place now um, for the just in case. So I fully support these with the uh, with the amendments. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Fall. Uh, just to echo what Councillor Sutton has said, uh, these are recommendations for a fallback position, which we hope to God we'll never have to face. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Gussain. Ditto. I, uh, I reiterate you. exactly what my colleagues have said. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Councillor Harvey. Councillor Morse. Councillor Pearson. Councillor Williams. Councillor Wright. Yes, Chair. Um, just okay. like to say thank you to the work that's gone on with this um, and to taking on board the amendments, uh, which now make this an absolutely sensible, very clear structure. So thank you to Barn and to yourself for that. Okay, thank you. And I know Councillor Wood's been involved in this. Councillor Wood. Thank you, Leader. Um, yes, it's absolute, It's a very balanced paper, and I think uh, events at a national level demonstrate how we do need to have um, the, the, the ability to be able to fluctuate and change how we work in a structured way. So this, this paper makes perfect sense. It's well balanced. Uh, I don't think it pushes the, the borders too far, and there is a, a check and balance involved that any time this paper is going, these powers are going to be used, it has to be in conjunction with either yourself, the leader, or uh, with Councillor Sutton as the deputy leader. Um, it's also worth noting that these, the, this, this is not a decision being made tonight. This, this paper will be approved by full council, so I think that's important to note. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, thank you, uh, Councillor Wood. And I just want to add again, the delegated powers, as far as I'm concerned, are already with the officers. It's about which officer will exercise them um, when one of the other um, officers are not there. So it's not a question that we're giving all sorts of uh, powers uh, to the officers and or myself or deputy and of course the deputy leader and myself are accountable to full council and that's where we get our mandate from and if we were to step outside of that full council would deal with us accordingly with regard to 
uh, Articles 14 and 15 of the uh, Constitution and Standing Orders 47 in the questions and the points that have been raised. Uh, I'm not going to deal with that tonight. I'm going to ask Barn to look into that for me. So, Barn, is there anything else you would like to add uh, to the paper? No, thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, so, Mark Devin, can you do the voting call, please? Thank you, Chair. Um, just before we do, can I have a proposer and a seconder for the, for the amendments to the recommendations? Okay, I will propose, and I feel sure the Deputy Leader will second. Yep, seconded, Chair. Certainly. Thank you, Rachel. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very, thank you very much. Uh, so, Councillor Bialik? Four. Councillor Foll? Four. Councillor Gassane? Four. Councillor Harvey? Four. Councillor Morse? Four. Councillor Pearson? Four. Councillor Sutton? Four. Councillor Williams? Four. Councillor Wood? Four. Councillor Wright? Four. I can confirm that's a unanimous vote, Chair, and the, and the recommendations have been carried. Thank you very much, Mark. I now move on to item 13 of the agenda, and this is the request to repatriate Chief Crowfoot's regalia to the Siskia Nation in Canada. And I think it's um, the Director John Paul Hedge and I think Camilla. So I'll start with John Paul Hedge first, please. Hi, right, it's actually Camilla on this one, Leader. Fine, Camilla. Camilla, here we are. Uh, you can tell us all what you're doing here and, and in talking to the recommendations that we see in front of us. Camilla. Thank you, Chair. Um, there's a detailed report and supporting papers associated with this agenda item. And from these, members will have been able to form an understanding of the background and particular issues associated with the Sikha Nation's request. Great Chief Crowfoot is a hugely important figure for the Blackfoot people, but especially for the Sikh-Seeker nation, as he was a Sikh-Seeker chief. He is revered as the father of the nation, and the regalia associated with him is considered sacred. The Sikh-Seeker tribal council are the closest living relatives to Chief Crowfoot, and they believe the return of the regalia would allow his spirit to rest in peace, and to contribute to a process of healing and reconciliation. I would particularly like to draw members' attention to section 11 of the report. Now this is a standard section in all city council reports, but it and it covers the implications of the decision in terms of the Equality Act 2010. Although the jurisdi jurisdiction of the Equality Act does not extend beyond the UK, the principles of the Act seem very relevant to this request and the potential effects of repatriation have been considered through this lens. The recommendation to executive is that legal title to the regalia be relinquished by Exeter City Council and transferred to Siksika Tribal Council. And I'm very happy to take any questions from members. Thank you, uh, Camilla. Uh, Councillor Sutton, would you like to um, uh, to put your recommendation to the council, please? Thank you, Chair. Yes, um, I'm very happy to um, to move this recommendation in um, what, as um, Camilla Hampshire has said, is a very detailed report. Um, and uh, I suppose the thing to say is we have a history um, in Exeter with RAM of uh, treating each request um, for the return of, of such items on its own merits. And there's been considerable work going on behind the scenes over um, months and years um, to actually get to the point um, where we have this report in front of us. Um, and I really want to thank the, the team at, at the Royal Albert Memorial Museum, led by Camilla Hampshire, um, for the work they have been doing. There have been a number of technical issues um, to uh, sort out, if you like, to ensure that um, the uh, the regalia can actually be returned um, to the, the rightful owners, the uh, the Sixtica, um Nation, and we and and I am particularly pleased that um, that Chief Crowfoot um, wishes to come and visit Exeter and to uh, receive. 
the regalia and to um, to take them home. Um, so uh, very happy to uh, to move this report. Um, we have moved quite quickly um, to get the report here, although um, I know there has been uh, pressure um, and it does seem to uh, have taken a long time. But as you'll see from the report, there are a number of technical issues uh, that, that needed to be dealt with. So this draws everything um, together. Um, we are doing the right thing by sending this back. And we, I very much hope that it won't be long. Um, before travel restrictions are lifted and Chief Crowfoot um, can visit us in Exeter to uh, um, to take over ownership of uh, these these important and sacred items. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Um, I'm going to go through the list again. Please shout if you want to say. Uh, Councillor Ledbetter and Councillor Mitchell. Um, yes, Lord Mayor. Councillor Mitchell, yeah. if I may. Um, I, I would call also... Me Lord Mayor, then. Don't call me Lord Mayor. Oh. I have no aspirations in that direction. <laughs> right, carry on. Thank, thank you, Leader. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I would like to very much um, welcome this report as well and, and thank um, Camilla Hampshire for the work that she and her team have done. Um, as the portfolio holder has stated, we do have a history um, within Exeter of looking at every individual case in detail um, and repatriating um, items and when we feel necessary and, and clearly in this case um, it's the right decision and I very much support the recommendation so thank you. Thank you uh, Councillor. Um, Councillor Fole, Councillor Gusain, Councillor Harvey, Councillor Morse, Councillor Pearson, Councillor Williams, Councillor Wright, Councillor yes. Wood. Oh, Councillor Wright. Sorry, you know you can't keep me quiet for too long. Um, I try. Yes, I know. <laughs> Absolutely in support of this. And I would just like to note uh, 8.7 of the report, uh, which I think is really significant about um, repatriating um, these clothes um, and to be in contact with the spirit of the ancestors. Uh, it's just really, really lovely. So I hope this will bring renewal and healing to all of us to do this. So thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Wright. Councillor Wood. OK, uh, Mark, I'd like you to do the voting roll call, please. Thank you, Chair. So, uh, Councillor Bialik. Four. Councillor Fole. Four. Councillor Gassane. Four. Councillor Harvey. Four. Councillor Morse. Four. Councillor Pearson. Four. Councillor Sutton. Four. Councillor Williams. Four. Councillor Wood. Four. Councillor Wright. Four. Yeah. Well, that's a unanimous vote, Chair, and the recommendation and the resolution has been carried. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Well, that is the end of the business. Um, uh, 6.23. Uh, I don't think it was made any longer by the, the way we've done it. I'd like to thank everybody who's been involved in getting this all together and for us to be able to carry on the business of the council in a sensible and productive way. And I'd like to thank the officers, and I would certainly like to thank all the councillors you see, we can be good people sometimes at meetings, and I think we've all done very well. I'd like to thank Kevin and obviously Andrew and Diana, and to thank you all. Please keep safe, everybody, over the next uh, few times. Our next meeting is the uh, Thursday, Tuesday, the 2nd of June. Uh, we have a full council in a couple of weeks' time, and you'll be receiving information from us on just how we're going to do that. Please bear with us. We will deal with it. We will carry on the business of the council. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. See you all again. See you, Phil. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.